Stan Gibalisco here. I'd like to discuss another topic found in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. I believe this is covered in all editions of the book, although I have the fifth edition before me right now. This particular illustration is figure 3-9 in chapter 3 on page 43 and it's a pictorial drawing of a typical ohmmeter. Ohmmeter is the type of a meter that's used to measure resistance. Usually just run, run all together as one word, ohmmeter, like that. In order to measure resistance, what we need to do is measure current and then we measure resistance indirectly. That's how we are able to do that. In order to figure out how much a resistor opposes the flow of an electric current, you need to run an electric current through that resistor. And when you place a certain voltage across that resistance and you get a certain current, you can calculate the resistance using Ohm's law. As you may well know, the resistance R in ohms equals the voltage E in volts divided by the current I in amperes. And you can convert to other units once you've reduced all of the units to their fundamental uh, standards in order to make the calculation with Ohm's law. You don't want to use kiloohms here, megavolts here, and, and you know, milliampers here. I mean, you, it's best if you use, sometimes you can get away with using different units, but they're only special combinations that work. The rule of thumb is always reduce to ohms, volts, and amperes. Once you've done that, you can figure out what the resistance is based on how much current flows through a resistor given a certain voltage across it. So what we do in order to make an ohmmeter is we put a battery and an ammeter or a milliammeter or a microammeter together with certain series resistances that are standardized and then we measure the current through the unknown resistance. That is why the scale on a typical analog ohmmeter like this goes backwards. Sometimes it goes all the way to zero here, um, although generally speaking, um, uh, in theory, if this were a straight milliammeter with a resistor in there, it wouldn't go all the way down to zero. But some of them do. They're, they're calibrated so that they do. But the lowest value is always very very low number over on the right and then it increases as you go to the left and all the way down at the extreme left end of the meter which would indicate no current remember there's a little infinity symbol that's what this sideways 8 is or also known as a lemnus gate that means infinity ohms or no conductance infinite resistance. I've always been fascinated by the concept of infinity, but um, infinity ohms. Infinity is kind of a nebulous, kind of an esoteric concept. There's no such number. So we might say instead that it is zero Siemens. Siemens being the unit of conductance. Anyway, when you have no conductance, you have no current. So the meter will be all the way over here on the left at that infinity sign, and that's why analog ohmmeters are like that. Let's just take a look now at a uh, schematic diagram of a typical ohmmeter, this is a simplified diagram of the meter you just saw. We connect the resistance 
to terminals, uh, usually a, a wire uh, for each terminal with a little probe, and we can connect that to the unknown resistance. Milliameter here, that's what MA means. A battery with a specific and well-known voltage, and it has to be a very specific and well-known voltage, for example, 9 volts. In order to ensure that, when you have an ohm meter like that, you always need to have a fresh battery or a good battery in there so that you know that its voltage hasn't dropped because that would affect the accuracy of the meter. Then we place a resistor, in this case it would be R3, in series with the milliameter and the unknown resistance. And then this meter based on the value of this resistor, and again, this has to be a very close tolerance resistor. That means it has to have a value that's very specifically and precisely known. means it has to be a high quality resistor. Same with this one. Same with this one. We can select a switch like that. Uh, use a switch, that is, we, to select these different resistances, all precisely known, and then we get different uh, ranges of ohms in our meter. Say times 1, we read the meter straight away, times 10, we multiply the reading by 10, and so on. But that is how a basic ohm meter works. It's really nothing more than a milliameter or in some cases a microameter in series with different selectable precise resistances. And then we place the unknown resistance across the probe terminals, measure the total resistance, that is the unknown plus one of these others in series, and the meter has been calibrated at the factory, instead of showing milliampers or microampers, it shows ohms, as has been calculated by engineers who have tested it very carefully in their laboratory. So that's how an ohm meter basically works. Ohm meters are typically combined with voltmeters and ammeters, milliampers, and microampers in a unit called a volt ohm milliameter or VOM so when you see VOM that's what it means it doesn't stand for some obtuse or uh, unsavory phenomenon it means volt ohm milliameter in electronics also sometimes called multimeter because it is a multi-function meter. So this is the ohm meter function of a multimeter or a volt ohm milliameter, a simplified schematic diagram of how that works. You can read all about these meters in chapter 3 of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics 5th edition. That is, that is and any subsequent editions that may come out and in this particular case actually any edition will do so you don't need to have the fifth edition look for it at amazon.com you can find a link to amazon.com at my website sciencewriter.net I've also made uh, website on that website you'll find quiz explanations link look for the quiz explanations link in this fifth edition of teach yourself electricity and electronics I have explained the answers to all of the chapter ending quizzes in text and graphics on my website in addition to that you can go to YouTube and look up the playlist for this book
and look at videos that explain the answers to all 100 of the final exam questions in this tome. Stan Jabalisco signing off from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Until next time, so long.